And welcome to the Oak Creek Fire Protection District Board meeting. And we're going to get started, as we traditionally do, with the Pledge of Allegiance. We're going to ask Director Baker to provide the Recording pledge. Recording in progress. All right. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Roll call of board members. All board members are present. Thank you. And thank you for everybody that's here today. This is a very special day, and uh, we will address that here in just a short bit. So we greatly appreciate your participation and attendance today. All right, my fellow board members, any additions or deletions to the agenda? Any additions or deletions to the agenda? One thing I would ask my board members is to give a degree of flexibility on item number eight as we are missing one individual and we will punch that in and we'll make adjustments to the minutes when it comes about as we go into that portion of the agenda. Um, and under new business, we will have a motion. Okay. Any other additions, deletions? Then, uh, can I uh, get a motion to approve the agenda? I move to approve the agenda as, as uh, placed agenda. forward. Second? Second, Ted. And all in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, the agenda is accepted. And next, review and approval of August 22 regular meeting minutes. Ms. Barb sent it out earlier. Did anybody see any issues that needed to be addressed? All right, hearing none, may I have a motion to approve the August 22 regular meeting minutes from the Oak Creek Fire Protection District Board meeting. Motion so to approve the minutes. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, we are moving through. And Chief, you'll let me know when we can yeah. adjust that. Okay, yep. perfect. I think we should be good. He's here. He was just, they just got back, and he should be. All right, perfect. Right then we'll leave that uh, item as it is. Um, let's see, where are we? Director Woods, would you like to present our financial matters, please? Yes. Ben shows up. Ben's helping out. Oh, he has to move it, right? He has to move it. I don't have the special little connection that I need. So, the first, I'm going to stand up because I can't see it. So, I stand up. I do them well, but see, I have a board. So, this is the overview of the year to date revenue. You can see that we are actually above the blue line. The blue line was what we budgeted. So, we are happy that our revenue is coming in over budget. I will say that, um, as expected, revenue for property taxes drove about 988000 between July and August. But here today, you can see that we're still good. Um, some other contributors, ownership taxes are still way above what was projected. Interest income is above, and lease revenue is above. So those are driving the numbers up, along with property taxes, are actually above them. Next slide, then. Any, if anybody has any questions, just holler. Mm -hmm. So same thing with expenses. Yeah. Expenses are the other way. Expenses are actually under budget, and there are some reasons for that. Um, administration department is under budget um, mainly because uh, legal expenses that were anticipated did not materialize and may not materialize, so that's a good thing. And training, we haven't hired a deputy chief. Is that the training chief? captain? Training captain for training at this point, and so those amounts are not in there, which is why, which is another reason expenses are above, I mean, sorry, below budget. Next slide. Net income kind of jumps around like it normally does. I just put this up there because just to kind of take a look at the graph from 
last year, which is the blue line, to this year, which is the black line. And you can see that we're trending very similar in terms of net income. So we will expect our net income to be where it's supposed to be. Do you have a question? Yeah. Was the $600,000 difference, or thereabout, that to me seems somewhat unique. Is, did you find any rationale why we went um, from 1.1 to 1.7? 1.1 uh, was last year. Right. This year is 1.7. Um, the two graphs that you saw before where we have expenses are below budget, revenue is below budget, it's going to drive the income. So level. it's just going to split. So it's going to split. Okay. We, should still, we should still see it trending down because um, this is the first month where we've had monthly negative income and the reason for that is because of property taxes take a nose dive in August because July is the, the second time that property taxes come in it's less than the first time and then we don't have any property tax re property tax revenue to speak of for the rest of the year a little smidgen but not but much. director woods the the uh, the, the revenue one, the, the income one that you were showing originally, mm -hmm. that's like divided by 12 for the year, correct? It's just yeah, that, distributed? Th these are, this is not a, this is what we would call um, a linear budget. In other words, it goes from zero to 5.8 million, mm -hmm. and then expenses go from zero to 5.7 million. So we're going to look at some of the big co components of revenue and expenses. We'll look at property taxes and we'll look at labor. And you kind of see where they stand in terms of because when I put together labor budget, property tax budget, and all of the other budgets, it's not a linear budget. Mm -hmm. I use percentages from 2021 to project how it was going to fall okay. in 2022. So it's a little different look than just than the, the overall linear. Okay. So you probably see that in the next couple slides. Next slide. And I have to have notes, sorry. <clears throat> so property tax revenue, you can see that it is pretty much spot on with what we budget if you're looking at um, an actual annualized view. In other words, this is percentages from last year applied to the overall yearly budget for this year. So you can see that we are pretty much spot on with property tax. And We'll expect it to level off. We won't, we won't expect it to take a dive because, again, this is year to date that we're looking at. But we will expect it to level off because property tax revenue, there just won't be much more in 2022. Next slide. Okay, labor. I've looked at labor. Labor is our biggest component of expense. I mean, it, it's, it's by far. A bigger expense than anything else. So I've looked, I've got labor, I've got slides for labor three different ways. This is labor adjusted for what we bill in our canyon because we have intergovernmental agreements within our canyon and we split expenses. We split um, maintenance and prevention services, we split those 50% within our canyon, and fuel services actually gets billed 100% to inner canyon. So the number that you're looking at is labor adjusted for what we bill. And you can see again, it, it's following a line of it's going to be overall year to date below the annualized labor. Okay, next slide. So I'm also going to look at labor that does not have surf in it and has and has the adjusted in it. So I've taken surf out because we get reimbursed more than 100% from the state, well, 100% from the state um, for out of district type fires that we fight. And so I've adjusted labor for the amount of bill and for surf. And again, you can see that it is coming in under budget at this point. So I think that's something that everyone needs to understand, and that is labor right now annualized will come in under budget. Next slide. <coughs> so we look at SURF by itself. So SURF was budgeted to be at like 598000 in August of 2022. 
And again, it is below budget, which is a little surprising to me, but it's below budget. It's just, we must be really good. Okay, next slide. And thanks for the questions, by the way. I appreciate that. I really do. So, just click once. There we go. I've, I've, I've put circles around numbers because there's a lot of numbers on these graphs, and I think people start to get glassy-eyed when they look at all the numbers that are up there. So, what we've seen is we have submitted $783,224 in served expenses to the state. Next click. We have been reimbursed for $454,387 from the state. And a lot of that is due to Beth. She's been really good, kudos to Beth, at, um, at keeping track of these and really hurting Right hurting, right hurting, yeah, right hurting over the state because our average from submittal to payment is 41 days. That may sound like a lot, but last year it was 63 days. So we're keeping a lot better track of the state and getting the money back from the state. And this is important. This is very important. Okay, next click. So remaining to re be reimbursed is 328000 $856. So there's still a little bit of a spread there. We still have some money coming in, but the good news is we're getting it in faster. And next click. I, I just basically said wanted everybody to see where we were in 2021 in terms of what we've. I'm sorry, this is not where we are. This is remaining to be reimbursed. Next click. In 2021, we were at $642,000 some change. We received every dime of the 1.2 million that we submitted to the state. So it just took a little longer last time. We didn't get fully reimbursed until 2022 for the 2021 um, surf expenses. Um, next slide. Any questions? I know we already had some. Well, I would imagine that it was uh, COVID-related and maybe staffing issues to get the reimbursements in that 60 very well could have been. days. I'm not, I'm not casting dispersions on the state or anything. Right. I think it was both sides. I think in terms of submitting it, we weren't as arduous about it as we are now. We weren't as, we weren't as timely about submitting the expenses and actually reviewing and auditing the expenses. And again, I agree, there's probably a lot of COVID-related people in the state just, you know. If, it's, if, if in doubt, we always believe COVID. Yeah, it seems to be the case. Next slide. Okay, so I need a motion to approve the expenses for the months of August 22, $23,119.33. Make a motion to approve the expenses for August of 323, 1933. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion Aye. passes. Any Thank questions you. for Director Woods from the public or questions. I only have two things to say. First off, thank you for your analysis and Chief and Barb for keeping us under budget. I think that's an important piece that the public needs to recognize is the diligence that we have in our financial focus and ensuring that your fire department is, is meeting and uh, has the ability to manage not only their personnel but also their finances. Secondly, a little tongue in cheek, I believe that Connor for High School could be looking for a substitute teacher in finance and Director Woods might <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> to provide that effort. <laughs> and I mean that with every, every degree of appreciation for you educating us. Thank All right. You, Director Priestley, but I do not have a teaching certificate, so. I, I, you don't need one. You have an innate ability. <laughs>
All right, thank you. So that completes financial matters. <laughs> Chief Blair, would you please provide us your monthly report? Of course. Uh, the, uh, the end of August is when the counties have our preliminary evaluations for the district, and this year they dropped slightly. That means moving forward into 23, we're going to have a flat budget. Um, we are looking at some larger infrastructure improvements in 23, and that's going to include some improvements to some, station as well, some stations as well as apparatus replacement. Uh, working with the area coordinators within the department to start building the preliminary budget and working in what 23 will look like for the district. In October, we should have a preliminary budget, and then in November, we'll have the draft budget, and then in December, we'll have the final budget for you to approve. Um, with possibility of consolidation and the administrative alignment that Inner Canyon, North Fork, and Elk Creek have been working on, the three fire chiefs have been working together in our processes during the budget uh, work and making sure we're able to provide the best services for our residents and attempting to eliminate some of the redundancies within our district. So we're trying to kind of streamline things, and if the consolidation works out, you know, obviously there's going to be some economy of scale, if you will. We're trying to kind of streamline the operation right now with some maintenance and a few other operations. Fire season has continued to march across the west with uh, large, fast-moving fires. If anybody's been paying attention, uh, the last five days have been significant. It's changed the landscape a lot. It's been fairly slow through August, hence some of those surf numbers and the reimbursements. Um, in the last two days, fire season has changed and shot up. It's increased dramatically. There's been a lot of, uh, there's been loss of life, loss of property, and significant resource damage in the West, in Oregon, Washington, California, Idaho, and Montana. Everywhere but Colorado. Um, Colorado's avoided any large fires so far this year. Uh, we stated a moderate fire danger throughout the year, uh, throughout almost the entire season. We are increasing a little bit with this warmer weather, but a cold front's coming through, and I think it's supposed to be a high of 50 on Saturday. Um, so we've, we've done pretty well so far. Uh, all of our resources are back at home right now. We do have one individual in Washington helping. And we are going to be starting recruiting for the 2023 Fire Academy in the next couple weeks. We do have a couple things I've added that uh, we just found out about. We did receive the SEPA grant for the uh, website design. It was a micro grant we applied for. We got the email this afternoon and we got that. So that's going to offset the cost of updating our website and a, updating the content and making it more user friendly, but as well as keeping the or as well as starting the ADA compliancy. We've got I think a year and a half to make sure that's done. We're we're ahead of the game right now, but that's going to cover the cost of that. We also received a DFPC grant for PPE. Uh, we put that grant in a few weeks ago. That grants for I think 197 thousand, just below 200 thousand dollars. There's a slight hiccup because. They chose the wrong brand of SCBA to award us, the one that we don't use. I'm working with the state to see if we can change to the brand that we do use for that. So we were awarded a different brand, which you can't really mix and match within for, for anything like that. So I'm working with the state to see if that's going to work, um, and I'll let you know on that. <laughs> Big Chili is also this weekend. We still need some more people to help if anybody affiliated with the department wants to go to Big Chili and help. If you haven't seen the email, you must be not watching your email. If, you, if you're available, talk to Sheena Tamberlin. She's kind of organizing everything. Um, that's on uh, Saturday. If you haven't been there, it's usually a really good time. And it does a tremendous amount for all the volunteer fire department stuff and down the corridor. As well as over on the other side as well. Uh, operations. Um, volunteer firefighters have 395 hours of staffing at Station 1. Elk Creek averaged 3.3 members per call, and 17% of the calls overlapped for a total of 21 calls. The average response time was 9.51. Um, one other thing on operations, uh, we've been pretty busy with uh, motor vehicle accidents. Um, Elk Creek assisted um, Platte Canyon, if anybody saw the tractor trailer roll over in Bailey. Uh, we actually, our, our crews did get kudos from Chief Mulligan. He called a couple days ago to say thanks. Uh, it was a very complicated call. Uh, tractor trailer ended up losing its brakes, rolling over um, with uh, two entrapments in the vehicle. It was a pretty complex call and everybody did a great job. Thanks. We only had two fires for the month of August, 68 EMS calls, and everything else is about normal for a total of 22 runs for the month, or 122, I apologize. Um, automatic aid that the mutual aid received, we had mutual aid 11 times and our transports continue to not match with uh, runs at 36 transports. 
training, firefighters logged 199 hours of training for the month, and uh, Zach Neese is getting his field internship and hopefully completing his paramedic program, and the goal is to get that done by the end of the year. Fire Marshal Parker, this is the summer is his big time to get most of the uh, inspections hammered out. Uh, he did 84 inspections for the month of February. Um, there's some new developments that have broken ground within the district for single family dwellings. Um, there's one down in Aspen Park, that's the largest one. I think that's 16 new single family dwellings. Um, and then several smaller ones, people subdividing lots. Uh, and the district is maintaining its stance on not providing exceptions for county code on access and driveways. We, that's been renewed. We, received several more emails from developers and engineers asking if we would write letters to essentially circumvent the county code, which it doesn't make any sense for us to do. And then that is uh, about all we have. We did have a small fleet hiccup. We had transmission go out in one of the modules trucks that's being replaced right now to the tune of $6,500. Um, but other than that, that's all we have. Um, thank you. you did, um, it's, old, well, it's coming up in old business for that. But I think are we yeah, we're here. Yeah, perfect. All right. Uh, Chief, are we ready to go? Yeah. I think All right. We're ready to go. So for everybody here, there are three times in a firefighter's career that really mark something memorable. And I'm gonna work back. It, really when a firefighter retires and they are moving on into their their next life that is the last thing that they'll remember in terms of their firefighting career but not to be trumped is any time that they are promoted and that that firefighter can provide a better degree of um, satisfaction for their career and looking out for their fellow firefighters and their family and then probably most importantly because you wouldn't get to those two had you not been sworn in as an entry-level firefighter. The day that you start your career serving the public. So today we get to recognize two of those significant landmarks. We have four firefighters that are being sworn in as entry-level firefighters. And we have a promotion that we get to recognize. Which will include a swearing in because, well, we just missed it when they were first hired. So we're gonna get two for one on that one, so you guys are gonna get a show. So, if I would, if we could, Chief, if you would call each firefighter up individually. Right. We can have Firefighter Zig Schmidt. And my fellow board members, would you please stand with me as we go through this process. Firefighter Beckwith. Firefighter McManus. And Lieutenant Weinfeld. Four. So, Oh, the three, three into the bomb, sorry, it was four total. So, gentlemen, there is nothing that I love more as being a part of the Elk Creek Fire Protection District than being able to swear in firefighters and to be able to recognize promotion. And on behalf of my board members, first off, we want to congratulate you for what you are about to partake in. This is a very significant and very important moment for you and for us because you are going to be protecting our livelihoods, our family, and our property. So we thank you for that. So without any further ado, if you raise your right hand, and don't make it awkward when I start this, all right? <laughs> I, state your name. I, John Sanders. Thank you. Do you solemnly swear to do my duty? Do you solemnly swear to do my duty? As a firefighter and lieutenant for the Elk Creek Fire Protection District. As a firefighter for the Elk Creek Fire Protection District. To the best of my ability. To the best of my ability. To serve my commanding officers with respect and dignity. To serve my commanding officers with respect and dignity. To serve the citizens of the Elk Creek Fire Protection District. To serve the citizens of the Elk Creek Fire Protection District. With compassion. Courage and integrity. With compassion, courage, and integrity. And to uphold the laws and the Constitution of the United States of America. And to uphold the laws and the Constitution of the United States of America. The State of Colorado. The State of Colorado. And the Elk Creek Fire Protection District. 
and the Elk Creek Fire Protection District. So help me God. So help me God. Congratulations, gentlemen. And what we're, we're going to do a badge pinning here real quick, and we will ask each of your family to come up individually. Chief, how would you like to start this All process? right. Uh, Firefighter McManus will be pinned by his wife, Tony. And you can stab. And Willie, you can stab. <laughs> <laughs> by his sons, Hayden and Judah. All right, this is a good, this is a good one for you guys. Take a count. Firefighter Zygschmidt will be pinned by his wife Erin. One more thing about uh, Firefighter Zygschmidt, he also just received the uh, Ralph Ann Scholarship for EMT class. One of the first people to actually close the deal and get that done. All my brothers getting sworn in um, firefighter. Uh, he's all Colorado, he's done volunteer. <laughs> So these three individuals have uh, completed their probationary period. They have completed all their tasks, and now they are no longer probies. They're just as firefighters. One of the big things about it is you'll see that firefighters wear blue, rookies, and probies wear red. It's always symbolic after this to get rid of that awful red shirt that you hate this size and keep from wearing it. And then the next individual we need to recognize is uh, Lieutenant Weinfeld. Uh, Lieutenant Weinfeld came to us as a volunteer in 2008, I believe. He was a volunteer for 10 years and then left with some family commitments. Uh, we've been trying to get him back and through a random series of events, he ended up coming back as a career firefighter. Then there was an opening as a company officer and he ended up stepping in as a, an acting officer and he is officially promoting to a lieutenant in the C-shift officer. So congratulations, Lieutenant Weinfeld. He'll be pinned by his wife, Missy. And his son, Jake. <laughs> Final congratulation applause for all four gentlemen. Get to work.
thank you all for indulging us and allowing us this opportunity. Well, nice no, job. Right? That's on perfect. the pizza box. That's, yeah. That's my favorite part. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That will move us into old business. The first item on old business is the public outreach committee meeting minutes. Uh, yeah, I will uh, a quick one and just that um, we actually managed to meet and we're moving forward. We had a lot of discussion about the website, the transition to the new website. Uh, working through it, we're going to have some more. We have another meeting coming up on the 19th, I think it is, to uh, put some bones and other additional information into the website, and then we'll continue the process. But since uh, Director uh, Newby, sorry, I was choking How quickly did they forget? For, no, <laughs> choking away. Um, did the minutes. I'm going to leave those speak for themselves, and that's all we need to talk about. Was there anything else? Yeah. Did you want to add anything? No. Okay, perfect. Well, uh, I, I just want to acknowledge what Director Wagner Newby, Chief Ware, PIO Urban, I saw her taking pictures. Yep. Bethany, thank you. And then uh, Sharon, where did Sharon go? Sharon She's, on. She's on the phone. Yeah, PIO. So um, thank you all for your efforts in that. And it sounds like that grant is going to put us um, well ahead of where we need to be in terms of. of of addressing the issues that were raised on this floor a few months ago when um, we started this discussion. Any questions about the Public Outreach Committee? All right, that'll take us to our second item of old business, the Consolidation Committee Meeting Minutes. And uh, Chief, do you want to just bounce, you've had probably the, the most influence and understanding of that, and yeah. uh, Director Woods and I could certainly speak on it, but I think your clarity on the subject would be a benefit to the... Of course, and I'll, I'll make brief of the minutes. Okay. They are very thorough. Um, so uh, where, where we're at with the consolidation right now, we're still, we have RFDs out, we have an RFP out, and right now we're looking for consultants to try and gauge the temperature of the public for this project. Uh, and so the idea is to hire a consulting company that actually deals with surveys. So a survey company, they can reach out. Because really between Inner Canyon, Elk Creek, and North Fork, it's about 400 square miles. It's a significant area. And with the population of, we're estimating, 27 to 35 people, we didn't feel that we would have the ability to do it in-house. We really felt that it would make a lot of sense to hire a professional because we really need to hear what everybody has to say. So right now we're, uh, re we're looking at companies and we're getting those uh, quotes back or the proposals back to see what that's going to look like. Um, once we get those, the uh, committee will select one and then we'll probably move forward with that. Uh, and that's going to be, we'll talk about that a lot at the meetings. There's going to be a big survey that comes out and the three big questions we want to see is would people support the consolidation of the three fire departments? There's going to be supporting documentation with, with what it's all going to, what, how it's going to work. It's not just, you know, here it is. The second question is service expectations. You know, what are your service expectations? And then the last one is a threshold for fees. You know, is everybody fine with where bill levies are right now? Would people rather pay more for better service? And a lot of this is we have to get the feedback from the public. It's almost irresponsible to go about a project like this without getting feedback from everybody. So that, that's kind of where we're at right now. Um, we're in kind of a holding pattern, just doing some research and looking at it. Meanwhile, on the other side, we're all, all three districts are looking at a lot of administrative alignment in an effort to streamline our operations. You know, even if, even if the consolidation doesn't go through, it still makes sense to combine a lot of things that we have duplicated across the districts. And one example, Chief, would be the training option, correct? Uh, the training, we're going to keep that in-house for the short term. Uh, one of the bigger ones is maintenance in fleet management. Um, we, yeah, we, we hired a uh, fleet mechanic, and all three of us had our own individual mechanics. And it really didn't make a lot of sense to have an individual mechanic for all three districts, so we're combining all of that. Um, another one is our wildland division. Uh, that's probably the largest proof of concept that we've had between us and Inner Canyon. Uh, the amount of work that they've been doing together is 
it, it's pretty amazing uh, between the chipping program, prop, uh, the home assessment program, a lot of the grants they've been successful with. So we, we've already had a lot of those alignments and we're just gonna keep moving forward with them. And uh, one added note is this, the, the consolidation survey bears a shared cost yeah. amongst the three districts. And that's right. one thing people need to understand is Oak Creek's not bearing the burden here. We're, we're sharing it with our neighbors to uh, the southwest and the south and uh, uh, wherever, yeah. however they, they fit. So this is not all on us. Any questions of the chief or the uh, director Woods or myself on the consolidation committee? All right, perfect. That moves us into new business. We have a motion um, that is on the agenda. Director Woods? Yeah, um, I actually have the privilege of doing a motion, and that is to, it, it's something that we've talked about and just never pulled the trigger, so to speak. So I'm making a motion to raise Chief Ware's salary by 5% retroactive back to March of 2022. There's a motion on the floor to raise Chief Ware's salary 5% from retroactive from March. Do I have a second? Second. All right. That gives us an opportunity since we have a second to have discussion on the motion. Do any of my board members wish to um, have any discussion on the motion? Uh, I would just like to say that I believe that Chief Ware um, gave the people that work for him a raise back in March, and I think it's only fitting that he also has a raise. And we all know inflation right now is kind of, you know, maybe leveling out a little bit, but it's been climbing this year. So I just, that's why I made the motion. And we have, and just so everybody knows, I've looked at the budget, and we have the money in the budget. Any other discussion on the motion? I think it's well deserved, Chief. So if you take it as in favor of the motion. Yeah, absolutely. Like that. <laughs> <laughs> Any other discussion? I'd like to take a point of personal privilege if I could. And I would just like to ask the public to recognize what we just learned from Director Woods in terms of what our budget is doing and how the Chief is managing what you and I are putting in in our taxes every day in terms of how this fire department is being managed. And I think that, that that is only the beginning of what recognition that Chief Ware is deserving. And his looking out for his members back in March, almost foreseeing what the financial consequences of the, um, the recent inflation issues that we have, what has really given us the opportunity to recognize a man who's looking out for his members first. So I'll step back into the role. So, yeah. One added note as a point of personal privilege, uh, Chief Aronson, I would love to get a line item in to recognize that. And perhaps if we get an opportunity for next year's budget to be able to work with the directors to try to get that in, if we are lucky to pass this. So. All right, we've had the discussion, and uh, we have a motion. The motion on the floor is that uh, Chief Ware receive a 5% increase retroactive from March. We have a second. Any other discussion? Call the question. All in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, the motion is unanimous. Thank you, Chief, for your Thank efforts. You. Thank you. Right. Uh, we're still in new business. Is there any new business? Any new business? Perfect. We'll close out new business and we'll go to citizens issue. Again, I'll start off by saying thank you all for being here. I know the reason we're here might have been uh, uh, specifically for our promotion and our new hires. But is there anything else that the, the community would like to address during citizens issue? Yes, sir. Um, I, Chief Ware mentioned that the budget's flat for next year. Is there anything citizens can do to, to make a stink to the county about that? I mean, inflation is killing us all. And well, it's based on property values. Yeah, that, I mean, that's it? Yeah. There's nothing else. 
that's that's it. Yeah. Well, property values have gone up also, but yeah, it's still flat. Yeah, it's actually uh, I, I don't have the numbers off the top of my head. It's down. The assessment of our district is down. I don't know, twenty five thousand dollars, which really, in a huge, you know, it, it really doesn't affect us a whole lot. So essentially, it's going to be flat for next year. Doesn't seem right. It'll work. Okay. It's <laughs> <laughs> a good question. Thank you for raising me. Yes, sir. Being concerned. Yes. Oh, thank you uh, <clears throat> for hearing my comments. Um, you know, this is intended as constructive input, not criticism. Uh, support and appreciate everything that the chief and the board is doing around consolidation. We touched a little bit about uh, communications last time um, of how we can educate the community getting up to this survey. Uh, chief, it sounded like you touched on that a little bit in your comments today. Um, I just kind of want to say I think that's a very important component of this because I'd hate for you to get input from people that don't really know the questions, the answers to the questions they're getting. Correct. Um, if that makes any sense. So, um, it, you know, just kind of wanted to go on record with that is, you know, can there be fact sheets, you know, what are the key benefits, what are the key challenges, so that through a number of different channels that can get out to the citizens. And they, you know, I guess just really my comment is I think that's an important component and look forward to hearing about that as this process goes forward. Yeah, the idea is to have a legitimate pros and cons as well as a fact sheet for each question so people can read everything because it, it's, yeah. it, it's not fair to ask a question without all supporting documentation. Um, so yeah, that's, that's part of it. And that's one of the reasons we're trying to hire a company that that's what they do is market research versus us trying to do it, because while I think we're good at being firefighters, we're not good at market research. Well, I'd say you're excellent being firefighters, so, um, <laughs> I was gonna say, so thank you. We're pretty good uh, at that, but definitely not market research. <laughs> no, no, that, that sounds good, and I, I think that's just kind of the thing that I think will help uh, get this through the process. My only other thought here is, you know, it sounds like this vote is really something that's going to happen after the mill levy vote. So, I mean, I think, you know, I'm not sure of the timing of everything, but I think as you time the rollout of this with your consultants, I think that's going to be important too. It is. And so, just, I guess, can I make a few more comments? Yes, sir. Here? I mean, yeah. I'll talk about the mill levy real quick. Um, you brought that up. We, we were looking for a little legal clarification. So, for those who don't know, we had something passed in 23 with a 10-year sunset. And honestly, I, I'm sorry, 13. All right, it's a long day. In 13. So what, we had to get some legal clarification to see exactly when that would sunset. It actually sunsets in 25 with the way it's set up. So what we have is we actually have an extra year of wiggle room. We're still not going to push that out. I, I made the board of directors aware of that when I got the clarification from legal. But I didn't want to speak to it unless we really knew the interpretation. Um, so that's going to give us a little more wiggle room. You know, we're not planning on stretching it out, but even our legal counsel said, you know, it's, it's a good idea to go in November of 23 for that mill levy, just because if it doesn't pass, and what that is, we're not increasing our mill levy, we're just stabilizing the one we have. What we're going to try and do is get rid of the sunset, which means, you know, everything will stay the same, it just won't go down. And then if I could, Thank you. if I could, I would like to have Vice President Wagner speak on what our communication subcommittee is, is working on. Sure, well I, I would, I mean I think we're aware of all of these and we're trying to figure out a way to get <clears throat> our website updated, our pushing out our social media and various other things so that we can keep this all in place. And, Obviously, the mill levy is a little bit of a different issue because we can't take a position on the mill levy. But um, part of part of this engagement is for us to get in a better position to, to communicate with our citizens, both here and across the other districts, and um, really get get there. And I think the new website is going to be a big assist in that. It's much easier for us to banner some of the bigger news and put stuff out there. So. I mean, we're, we're conscious of it, we're thinking about it as we move forward and trying to get all of our stuff up, so. All right, well, well that's great. I, mean, I really appreciate the focus that y'all are putting on that. I think that's going to be important. And I think, you know, the more information you guys create and put out there via those channels gives citizens opportunities to share that information with, with other citizens. So. Yeah. 
So thank you. Yeah, we encourage you all to talk it up. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> that, that's engagement. That's good. That's great engagement more than we can more traction than Facebook. Yeah. Huh? yeah. <clears throat> Awesome. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Any other uh, questions or comments or concerns from the citizens? All right, perfect. Well, with the pretty full agenda, we've moved through it quite quickly. Um, I show the time at 6.45, and I will ask for a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you all very much. Thank we'll call the meeting adjourned at 6.45.